parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wrestling Mayhem Show at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Mayhem Studio in Pittsburgh, PA. Dun, 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 dun. Nope, 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 nope. That's something else. Uh, but uh, a lot of Pittsburgh representation this week on Raw and WrestleMania. We'll get into a lot of that stuff. But this is the show where we talk about professional wrestling with fans of the sports entertainment or whatever you want to call it these days uh and with us we got a whole crew of people of course missy's on the ones and twos keeping the chat room straight and let us know what's going on out there and uh with us on the couch for some mutilator larry's hanging out watching the 205 live he was abreast of everything going on including the recent uk tournament uh, announcement over there yeah they're uh, gonna be doing a uh, uk tournament special well, i guess it's not a tournament anymore uh it's a special yeah yeah, a special uh in may coming up next month. looking forward to that also on the couch over there is chad the shad he's sporting that fuck that out shirt thanks to our friend billy that that uh uh uh, Mm -hmm. contributed that for the studio here we getting we've been getting a lot of play off of that shirt actually it's a good fit (laughs) it's a good fit yeah about right uh right we've had revy hardy like retweeting us like every week on midweek war when we take pictures with it and and, and talk about the podcast so it works out really well so and, and it just just fits what's going fits. on right now. Yeah. Right. We'll talk yeah. about that a bit a little bit. Uh, also with us is from Poughkeepsie, New York, the only one of the uh, of the Mayhemers with a future endeavor letter from WWE's corporate office. And he's all did up. It is Mad Mike. Sorg, what a week it's been. So many things we have to talk about and so many things we can't talk about. <laughs> I'm Lance Ketamaran. <laughs> fantastic fantastic this is gonna be <laughs> this is gonna be great uh, by, the way, by the way sorg um i got the new comic the wrestlemania special Ooh, it's actually really awesome i have to check that out uh, is it on they show the whole story of Sami Zayn and kevin owens oh like, nice from from the indies, I I have the four, the three, the three issues plus the special of WWE now, then forever, or then now forever. Pretty great. The Seth Rollins background story, basically. Um, so definitely, definitely recommend. I've been getting it on Kindle uh, to watch or read, and to I spoiled it for, to watch read. Yes, I wish I would read the comic books to you. That'd be great. Uh, also with us because it's the mayhem after mania and you never know who's gonna show up guys and this week back with us he is the commentator for inspire pro wrestling down there in texas back on the show he is a wrestle fan he is Heyman Payton. <laughs> <laughs> that looks great look. hey man mania i, I, I wish I wish Mike would have informed me earlier. I would have parted my hair weird and, weird and played Chet Chatterfield, but that's fine. <laughs> Hi, guys. How have you been? <laughs> Amazing. And we talked about it. You guys, if you're on Wrestling Mayhem Show Patreon um, at the $5 for Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold, we did dive into a little bit of what Eamon has been up to. Well, sort of. Then we started talking about the Amish for some reason. But anyways, it's kind of related, but not. But you'll just have to check that out to, to know what's going on. Uh, the Cliff Notes. Where the hell have you been, Eamon? <laughs> Uh, do you want the real story? Do you want me to make something up? Uh, uh, you're, let, let, let me put it this way. You're on the Mayhem show. Okay, that's fair. So I've been make up the real story. So I've been in the mountains of Appalachia. <laughs> doing, you know, I've been like JBL. I clown, climb Mount Everest or whatever the hell. He's, he's been, been setting climb. up the ring for South Paw Regional Wrestling. Yes. Yes, I have. <laughs> Very dysfunctional group. We have to prepare. We have to prepare for lethal leap year. <laughs> which every leap year that is so Number four. Um, yeah been, <laughs> i've been doing that i've been doing some wrestling stuff somebody check the stuff. calendar 
Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Amen2 Please, on the Twitter as well. And of course, this is your Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can join us at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can subscribe to this show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and video versions on the YouTube and Facebook page. Also, on, that few, on the Facebook page, especially here, live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com and on the Facebook page, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. You can watch me awkwardly try to fix the studio, or maybe we'll be eventually talking about wrestling, and you can join us in the chat room there and become part of Bermuda Magal. <laughs> Thank you, Bobby. Like that, that interrupts me doing the show uh, and makes this way, way more interesting of a podcast. Uh, but uh, you can check that out. You can also drop us a line at 412-206-WMS0 for the hotline or that email address. Good times. Good times, Good times. Good times Good at times. Wrestling Mayhem Show. Dot com and uh, also big thanks to our friends on the 405 media network uh for supporting the show and streaming this as well as uh the awesome cast over there uh so thanks for that uh you know you can go check us out on that stream as well and however you would like to do that and check out everything else wrestling mayhem show uh, uh master feed has everything including the 32 manias of mike all 32 manias with mike <laughs> Or on the podcast feed if you don't want to watch the video versions. And I do encourage you to also subscribe to that YouTube channel because we have been doing live uh, streams of uh, WWE Raw wrap-up and the Midweek Wars for a lot of the show recaps uh, as well. Please also uh, support the show, one, by sharing, commenting wherever you're you're checking us out, subscribing to us, uh, uh, sharing it with your friends that you think might be into something like this. You never know. You never know who's going to uh, dig our kind of humor. Really, it's a big question mark, let's be honest. Uh, but uh, you can also support us at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show with a donation. It helps the show along. It helps us put some money into things to improve the show and buy things that don't break and I have to fix at the beginning of the show. Um, and maybe a different computer that doesn't try to update every week. Thank you, Windows. Uh, but anyways, uh, thank you to our fans of the show level. First of all, Bo Diggity. Woo! Woo! As well as Ed Burke and his fantastic ice cream, the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment, the Trey Gar, uh, Trey Breaking Trey Fave.wordpress.com is his blog. I need to put that in this note so I can remember that. Bobby F. J. Town and at the Pocky Club level, get some special stuff, including gold and state of the mayhem, is ten- Tina Keys, Christopher Bishop, Mad Mike, henceforth, hey, refer- hey, 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 hey. Sorg. What? Excuse me, I have a title. Yeah, I was, I was, was on, I was about it. to say it. Oh, okay, okay. I was just making sure. I, I was, it was you lost uh, right wow. over. It. I was about to. No, no, I was, I was heading right into it. Okay, okay. I was, I'm just making sure. Okay. I get my pocket club worth. We you're get getting your pocket club now. You got even more because we're still yeah. going over it. But, I but, know. but, but what? Can can somebody get Mike and Snickers. Snickers. You're being. I turn into Lance Catamaran when I'm hungry. You're being. I think this would be an ad. Um, but. Damn it. Uh, Mad Mike, henceforth known as the American Kevin Owens. Wait, wait, was it Kevin Owens being known as American something he did. last night? What was he being called? He was, um... <sighs> like the American he hero or something? something? Like... Yeah, like, so, so, so Mike, does that mean you have to change your name? Now I am the Canadian Lance Catamaran. Okay, that, that okay, there you go. Problem is it, solved. Isn't Lance Catamaran you... already Canadian? No, he is from Upper Utica. Oh, Upper yep, Utica right. is not Canada. Sorry, six weeks. You're right. Six weeks. Six, weeks. six so. long, torturous weeks in Upper Utica. <laughs> have you, have you been to Utica? Utica? God, I've been You've been to Utica? Utica? Oh, wow. Utica. That hit home. Six um, weeks. Six weeks. Did you spend six <laughs> weeks in Utica? No, thankfully. Oh, all right. I spent 20 minutes in Utica. It sucks. <laughs> Jeez, don't go to Utica. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, you can influence the beginning of the show and a weird offshoot like this yourself at patreon.com slash wrestling ma'am show. Uh, let's see. I have in my next note here, Wrestle fucking mania. What's uh, that? Is that this weekend? I'll start. Shit. This could be my favorite WrestleMania. Ever? Really? <laughs> or in recent memory. I I can't like as a whole, top to bottom, out of thirty three WrestleManias. This out of thirty three WrestleManias, will... as in like I did not feel flat for almost any of that WrestleMania, not counting musical performances, even not counting pre show. What about engagements? Engagements? No, that was fine. Well no, well, technically 
technically only engagement at WrestleMania. He didn't ask him to marry her, marry him at WrestleMania. It was only a reunion. And it was magical. Don't get me wrong. It was magical. It was engaging. I, I, I will uh, give you best. Uh, Go ahead, Eamon. Uh, Eamon. I, I, I was going to say, as we shut down Sorg on his, his original <laughs> assertion, uh, I, I, I would say it was one of the best WrestleManias in a while. Yes. Like 10 years. I would years. say best since maybe. <laughs> not maybe 10 well, 10, uh, well, I would say I would say like six or seven. You know, I'll say 10 years because the last WrestleMania I watched before the last four was WrestleMania 20. So, yeah, I'll say 10 years. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I'll say it was the best WrestleMania in 10 years. I, I'll say if they cut out maybe three out of the last four matches, it would be the best WrestleMania ever. Okay. Okay. All right. Because after, 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 after like Cena and Nikki just squashed Ms. and Maurice, that's when it started to go downhill for me. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, hey, Chad, I, what do you I like, I like the SmackDown women's style match. Yeah. But. Triple H for Seth was too long. Okay. Randy and Bray had some cool moments in it, but it didn't fucking lead to anything. True. Mm-hmm. Same and with Taker, the Ambrose match. And Taker versus Roman was a slop fest. It yeah, was a hey, slop fest. Hashtag slop Unfortunately, fest. Unfortunately, I think the... Hashtag about my main event. The, the la- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the last Roman. two... The last two big matches on the show kind of took it a bit down for me. That take a Roman and the Goldberg Brock match personally, but overall, like to me, I just felt in the past few years there's been obviously such a reliance on. We talk about it all the time. There's such a reliance on old timer, part timer names, and yes, to a degree that was still the case here. But I felt that the newer stars were still featured a bit more on mm-hmm. this this year's mania and still really so in certain degrees protected a bit more it was it, it was like as you went through you're just like this is nxt mania yeah yeah right i like mean the right the right the right person won with aj shane the right person won with set triple h um you know i thought you know while even yes the hardy's coming back was kind of weird i think not not weird it was great but obviously you know it's another part-time team, but still, I think the younger, newer, newer um, stars were still given enough of a focus and enough of a platform to be really placed on on the same level as them and not overshadowed. Because I mean, think about what we had last year. Last year we had the New Day, Barrett, Sheamus, Del Rio getting squashed by like Austin, Michaels, and you know, Mick Foley, and we had the Wyatt family get destroyed by the rock and John Cena for no reason. Like this, I feel was much better when it comes to like protecting the newer stars. Yeah. Was, Obviously not completely, but it was a very good balance between old and new fresh and old. Um, they mixed it very well. I, I agree with Damon. I agree. Yeah. They, 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 wove them in a way to make you care mm-hmm. care and they brought the old guys to make you the the peak and then they made you care about the other people as well without smashing them into the ground yeah yeah absolutely it, 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 it says a nice mix and, and, and uh tina's in the chat room saying that let me back up here it was a long one but you couldn't tell because it kept you interested for the most part. And, and, and again, that's the biggest thing is at least in, and again, I think this is me watching it by myself would be like, Oh God, this is forever versus a room of people that are kind of engaging in, 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 in it and in, in conversation and everything. Like I felt like the room was never bored. Like even, even on the map, yeah, but how, but how much, how, when you're watching it with a group of people, how many of you are actually talking about the match or talking about the things around the match because the match is going so long? Well, yeah, yeah. Because that's what I noticed in my in my uh, party room that I, I was watching. I, I felt people were pretty into the event in our in our situation for the most part. So I mean, you know, it's it. I mean, I know, I know that's subjective, but uh, I I think generally okay. We didn't feel like, oh God, is this over as bad this year oh, no. well, as last uh, until, year? Uh, I didn't feel like that until we got to take her in reigns. Right, right. And, yeah. and but how even, sloppy it was. And it, even then was not It didn't feel like a marathon. No, like, no. Like you, you weren't drained by the last hour. Yeah. 
no of the um, show like that's you were true. last year. I was still yeah. attentive on that last yeah. hour. Yeah. Like even even with Roman almost dropping Undertaker on his head. Strangely enough, I enjoyed the Raw matches more than the SmackDown. Yeah. Which is weird because usually it's the other way around. Usually the Raw matches are That's the ones because that fly. SmackDown had their WrestleMania tonight. Yeah, kind of, right? Yeah. Sm- yeah. SmackDown had the matches that they probably should have had yeah. tonight. Yeah, like I, I was watching Ambrose and Corbin before we went on. I was like, why wasn't this the match they had at Mania? <laughs> that was yeah, the match he should I, have had with Brock last year. It, 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 was, it was. You're yeah. right. Yeah. I accidentally licked but, my pop screen. And it's really throwing me off. I'm th- sorry. There were there were a lot of uh, <laughs> results that I felt like should have been flipped. Yeah. That weren't. like I felt like Corbin should have taken the title at Mania, and mm-hmm. then this should have been a rematch. You know what I mean? Tonight. Well, I, I have a feeling mm-hmm. that it looks like we're going to get a strap match between uh, Corbett and Ambrose now. I'm mm-hmm. okay with that. <laughs> I have a funny, if it, have if a it funny leads, feeling about that. If it leads, well, it looks like they're doing rather well in the ring together. So if it leads to a good match, but, I mean, if you want to prolong it, and like, I'm okay with that. I, I also felt like that whole Cena-Miz build that they had going for a month, which was amazing just fizzled like at, at at when it came to the match you know what i mean yeah. like it felt yeah. like it felt like a normal smackdown well i don't want to say smackdown but like normal just it didn't feel match. like a wrestlemania it match. no it, was it wasn't ex- a wrestlemania match it, it felt like like that it match should... the match that maria menounas gets into like, right they, like yeah. a, it, it felt very special attraction i i don't know how much like special great wrestling match like yeah. I, I don't see like there's not room for uh, see the Miz to go through like a, a, a Matt Classic around a big tag match. I mean, that's yeah. it's convoluted to begin with. Um, and then you have Al Roker, uh, yeah. Chocolate Thunder Al Roker. <laughs> uh, it, which, by the way, still, do not do Al. not say Chocolate Thunder to Shane Taylor. He has stated this, and you will be unfriended. <laughs> so um, also, do not Google Chocolate Thunder with your safe search off. No, no, absolutely not. Um, but uh, still, it, it's been yeah. No, I I, I think, but I also go ahead. I, I think it's almost commendable that Cena had the kind of like in a, the kind of short entertaining style like kind of match because usually that's like you said that's slated for like a Maria Menounos or like well, but they were, some other like you know like a women's match or that's something. That's true. Like they weren't building it that way. Though. I think you it's know commendable I mean? that Cena was the one that had it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they were building it as like a blood feud. Yeah, that was good. That was going to be like that was built to be a match like, that was could have stole the show. Well, well, I mean, like, in theory, and, and, and the wrong team be, went you know? over. In my opinion, the wrong team went over. Yeah, and how are you going to do? Yeah, a pro- who, how are you going to do a proposal when you lost the match? Um, excuse me. Con- One of con- the best WrestleMania, WrestleMania moments of all time is when Macho Man lost his retirement match, and then Miss Elizabeth came out to pull off Sensational Sherry, and that's when they reunited for their wedding at SummerSlam. That's true. I, true. It came I don't with think a loss. This was even, I don't think this was even close to the same kind of gravity. No, 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 no. no. What, I, and here, here's what, because I was, I was talking about this with my buddies when we were watching it, and I was like fantasy booking it myself. Here's what should have happened. They should have both done the five knuckle shuffle. They should have, um, and Cena should have given the AA to Miz. And then he should have looked over to Nikki, like done the big point and said, you know what? I'll let Nikki pin him. And then Nikki, he tags Nikki. Nikki runs in, goes for the pin. Miz rolls her up for a real quick one, two, three when Cena's not looking. So Nikki costs them the match and she is devastated. She is upset. She is hurt because this is what she wanted. She wanted a big in-ring return. She wanted to tag with Cena. She wanted a WrestleMania moment with him. And Cena's like, it's okay. It's okay that we lost because, and then he pulls out the ring and does that whole spiel. That would have been a much better moment. A little less fairy Complete tale. Side note: Can I go ahead? I, I was I was going to say, can we also note how amazing it is just from the fact that Cena was wrestling with a ring in his pocket? It's <laughs> probably worth more than all of our houses combined. That I thought he I had a hand. Was, off. I don't think he was wrestling. He had a, he had a handoff think... from. Uh, it was either Al Roker or somebody down um, on the f- on the floor. Yeah, I don't think he was. Yeah, yeah. I felt, I felt yeah. that too. Yeah. Might have, I was gonna say, if he was, if he was, it makes sense why he's been wearing khaki shorts for years. <laughs> he's been building that for fifteen you know, years. It's uh, a long con. It's a long con. Go, Chad. Yeah. Go, Chad. 
She, they probably had the win. It was probably in the seventy-five page thing she had to sign order to win. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you will so. only be, you only receive marriage. That's why she was so yeah. excited going into this match. It wasn't for a WrestleMania moment. She's like, yeah. I'm finally getting around that contract. It was I'm worked finally, into the contract. Yeah, she knew yeah. it was coming. Yeah, it, yeah it's. It, Rule 75 of John Cena's house rules is that you must win a mixed tag team match at WrestleMania in order for a marriage to occur. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're being reminded, uh, Tina's uh, uh, the Lucha Underground scholar here, and says Willie Mack uh, has a finisher called the Chocolate Thunder Bomb. Of course he does. So <laughs> Al Roker should definitely be his manager. <laughs> Guys, I miss Lucha Underground. <laughs> Miss you every day. When we get back, it's gonna be all night long. It is. Willie Mac, Johnny Mundo. Oh jeez, oh jeez, I gotta get caught up. Uh, God but, damn. Anyways, it's be great. Um, okay. Other than that, uh, you know, even even I thought the the pre show was great. You know, I thought they had a lot of fun with the 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 battle royal. Uh, Baron and Dean had a good match, uh, and even the cruiserweights yeah. had a good match. Good. And let's all not forget that. The real MVP of the pre-show is the lady that tried to stop Gronk from jumping, the, <laughs> jumping the wall. Yes, oh my god, that was uh, awesome. She was just doing her job. She wasn't informed. It's not her fault. She probably should get a raise because that is the fastest I've ever seen a security guard move in the WWE for a long time. And they moved out However, a potential serial killer. <laughs> that is not the fastest I've seen a blonde woman move towards Rod Gronkowski. No, oh. that's a fair point. I'm just saying, it's a fair point. The best part was that the guy in the black pole to the side put his hand. I was like, oh, no, no, no. You got to let him go. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, oh, no. Oh, go, oh boy. No one told her. No one told Mary I, that, uh, oh, uh, Mary Gronk's pulls, getting in the ring. Mary pulls out a taser and ruins yeah. Mojo's Mar- moment. Mary, oh yes. and then, yeah, then it's then Bill Belichick has to get involved because, uh, like, now he's an injured NFL player. And the NFL suing oh, uh, Vince McMahon. Yeah. But no, I, I had heard he got approval from the Patriots organization to. Good. Uh, Good. So that wasn't just him. He could have won the battle royal. He could have. I love like 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 he goes in. He goes in. It's like like Mojo has to stop him from doing what he's doing. (laughs) Like he's like like he looks like he's 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 so hype he's going to hurt himself. Like that thing where like Enzo first came out when he debuted a year ago and his first match on a pay per view and he was like going so hard that he hurt himself on the ropes. Um, like I that that was a level. Uh, Gronk was too hype almost. So, Overnight. but but still, that was and not a fan of Gronk or anything like that. But that was a cool moment for them, and it was it was it was interesting. It was cool that they were having it on the pre-show yeah. again. Something that's on was on USA Network. You know, I and enjoyed in front that of a bunch royal. of people. Oh, it was that was like one of the most enjoyable just battle royals I've seen in a while. And and but- and. and- and the, the, the celebrity involvement actually got the crowd behind Mojo, which I was very happily surprised by. Yeah. Like I, As soon as it came down to Mojo and Jinder, I was like, oh, God, the crowd's going to revolt on this. <laughs> but no, they did a great job of you know building up Mojo, I feel. I was glad that uh, Jinder made it to the final, too. You know, that, that just he, wasn't expected. He was not hindered. He was not hindered. <laughs> yeah. no, he wasn't. Although, no, he wasn't. I, Jinder Mahal, hold, hold on, Jinder... Um, we love you here at the Wrestling Mayhem Show. <laughs> when you're when you're throwing water on someone <laughs> or beer, make sure to actually hit the person that you're throwing the water on, and not the 18 people behind him. Hey, hey, it gets it gets hype at WrestleMania, man. I mean, I on. guess. But I mean, you, all the all the favorites to win that were eliminated. You know, like it, it was it was yeah. a nice surprise. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. And it felt like uh, with some, somebody at our party was just like, wow, it feels like anybody can win this. Like yeah. a battle royal yeah. should be, right? Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it did. It wasn't scripted. It didn't feel... Well, yeah, up right. until Gronk poor, jumped over. Poor Braun, but... though. No, poor no, Braun. no poor, poor Braun. I mean, it, it, got better on, it got better on Monday. It did, but a little poor bit. Poor Braun. Yeah. Poor Samoa Joe. Uh, poor Samoa it Joe. Got slightly yeah. better on Monday. Oh, that, oh, poor yeah. Samoa Joe wasn't even... On the card, no, did no. not make an appearance. Did not make a run in. The hairy guy from NXT was on and, the card, and, and over Sork, Samoa Joe. Sork, um, Sork, who who was the person on the show that said Samoa Joe was going to get? Uh, hold on, the uh, Larry, can you can you do me a solid? There's there's something special up on the board over there. Uh, yeah. you, you, can you can you grab that for me? Which one? Uh, I don't know if you can reach it. It's above. It's above the 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 the, the ransom the note? note looking thing. It's above the note. 
It's above the note. I got something Sorg. here. Uh, if you Sorg, can even you, grab you're that. Ignoring, you're ignoring my questions. No, 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 no. I'm acknowledging Sorry. and what? Sorry. Yes. I'm, I'm going to, I'm just going to go ahead and do this over here. Okay. We have a lot of commentary in the chat room. Okay. Um, for starters, I have to, I have to like Bobby's comment that Gronk is going to get a touchdown 69, retire mm -hmm. and join the WWE. Yes. Mm. Like, absolutely. We can see, see that happening. And Tina wants to know, could we talk about the possibility of a 3MB reunion? A 3MB we have versus been talking about it. I, I like it. 3MB versus Sandy for TakeOver Brooklyn. Book oh. it. What did he say? Book it. To 3MB versus Sanity at TakeOver Brooklyn. Let's make it happen. Take it, Let's make okay. it happen. All right, all right, Mike. This is me. Uh, now, of course, it'll be a little bit before I can deliver this. Maybe I'll just put this in an envelope and send it to Poughkeepsie. But on Raw <laughs> Wrap-Up, I believe that we made a bet on whether Samoa Joe would be booked and used uh, pretty much period on WrestleMania. That was not the case. That was unequivocally not the case. I owe you this 20-spot tie bot. Yes. This is yours. Yes. This is yours. Yes. So, ah, I feel vindicated. There you go. You can have some I feel vindicated. Mark. So that that goes to you. Um, uh, so you, you you win that one. Um, and Samoa Joe loses, as do we all. Uh, he, he was real good Monday night. He, he was. was. He was. He was. And, and, and I love that. Um, and, and, and talk about Monday night, and I actually want to get that in a moment here. Uh, but uh, again, kind of the oh, one, more, one more thing about Mania before we move to Monday night. Sure. Um, I remember reading this on Brandon's, and we had to bring it up. The Kevin Owens Samoa Joe match, uh, Kevin Owens Chris Jericho match. <gasps> when the the portrait behind behind Chad there, right, oh, which we did not, we didn't have a chance to address here. Uh, right. No. Uh, so you can see the artwork behind. I, I need to pop that that camera up a little bit, but if you see. The, uh, maybe you've seen pictures on, on the website and stuff, but it's the portrait from the friends. Was a creation of the creation of, of Kevin. Kevin. Creation of Kevin creation photo of Kevin. or portrait we have here. Thank you, Billy Johnson, for sending that in, that in for some decor. Um, we replaced the the Christian movie with Shawn Michaels with something, and we and we replaced it with a Christian poster of two Canadian dads. Yes, exactly. So. <laughs> But you notice there's a little reach out happening there, and there's a finger point and and everything. And Mike, and the and what Brandon pointed out and did not occur to me, I, I told Sorg this off air last night, and he's like, "That is brilliant." When Kevin Owens reached out and touched his fingertip on the bottom rope, it was a callback to the picture, <gasps> and that is amazing. Is your mind blown? <laughs> that is absolutely amazing. <laughs> And Kevin Owens is a god amongst wrestlers. And Jericho addressed it in his little speech backstage on Monday night. Mm -hmm. No, you know what happened? He's going to take that fingertip. You know what it was? Road Dog saw the show, or saw you opening the package and put that He's on. What? His... Road Dog saw the face. He saw you unwrap but, that and, and but like, he, that's going on the dartboard. But he booked SmackDown. He could have booked part of WrestleMania. I guess so. I guess so. Um, Don't take that away. From well, me. good good point. Also from from the chat room, can we talk about AJ Styles shampoo commercial during Mania from oh from Wheels? Uh, it was, was really it was a blustery day. His flowing locks uh, were were tremendous. Um, yeah, that yeah. match was, was tremendous. Very, it was very herbal essence. Very herbal essence. Yes, exactly. Like just like, and he did a little like, you know that like face. You know, not the kissy face, but like, yeah, my he knew hair's, it. My hair is sweet. He knew it. That match was awesome, though. It was good. It was really that good. That was probably my second favorite match of the night. Yep. Hell of a way to start. I mean, hell, like I said, the kickoff show was, was hell of a way. Hell of a um, way to start was TakeOver. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tina, I think the bet is for less than 58 cents. I Wait, <laughs> unless they've gone up since I've been to Thailand. Uh, so, because <laughs> last <laughs> I knew, it took like... Uh, Oh wait, no, it was like thirty-five. Remember, I thought it was ninety. Bot was a dollar, but anyways, um, yes, yes, yeah. Sort of the real pre-show. The real pre-show was Takeover. Of course, Takeover was an amazing show. T take new a, belts new for be everybody. Yep, yep. Conveniently, convenient. <laughs> Guys, I, I have to say though, very. I'm a little. Wor I'm a little worried about NXT now. Why? Because not the um, because everybody's not 
Nakamura, Ty Dillinger, and The Revival are all gone. Uh, Have you not learned by now that it's going to be okay? Um, Drew then, McIntyre, but, Drew Mike, McIntyre gotta, does not a Nakamura make. Mike, you got to keep in mind, WWE at this rate is standing 10 indie stars like every two months. Like it's it's getting they're, – they're, they're cultivating so much talent to where they're, they're going to be fine. I just – you know. You could have the same anyway. conversation last year. Yeah, but we did. After hey, last did. year's call-ups and say, well, I don't know about NXT. What's going to happen here? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Bobby well, Roode comes on and you got Nakamura. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they still have Bobby Roode. You're, you're, well, you're going to be okay. And I think we're just like, oh, can Bobby Roode hang, right? Or, you know, and and, and yeah, it, it, it's great. Like you said, if you're, are you watching the best of the indies? You will be very soon on WWE Network. Um, it, cash is but NXT is turning into TNA. What did you Just say? What? NXT, I, NXT what? Drew Galloway, Bobby Loosen Roode. the tie. You're losing circulation to your brain. <laughs> You've been watching too I much haven't DNA. been using my brain at all. Bobby Roode, Eric you Young, know, Drew Galloway. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, they, I mean, they, you know, they wanted a you future, know, so just like they TNA, left. William Regal getting to board meetings with Nigel McGuinness and Percy Watson talking about <laughs> I mean, hell, Nigel thought it was Ring of Honor. He did make that Nigel, mistake. Nigel thought the show was Ring of Honor. <laughs> that was great. You guys see that when Nigel yeah. was like, like, we're the very best to go very far here in Ring of Honor on, on NXT TakeOver. Yes, 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 wow. Yes. yes. If we can take a step back here, can we recap which NXT stars have shown on, on the main Who shows? Be you? Well, well be we you? have Ty Dillinger, Nakamura, and Fantastic. I don't even need to do anything but dance in front oh, of the crowd wait. today, tonight. And, and, and Sorg, what, what, was your, what was your two guys? What? what? Who, who were the other two guys that, that came on Raw last night? On Raw? Oh, uh, the Raw. Yeah! He said he wouldn't do it. Uh, <laughs> which I, I, mayhem I bump to... to, to uh, Scott Dawson. Like you want to name like previous NXT people who are yeah. now on the main roster? Like, like just oh, the, just who came the, up this week? Uh, Matt Carlin's is making an excellent comment here. NXT equals TNA in talent, not in execution. Yes, that's that, and that's, that's the thing. Okay, I mean, look fair. at the people that have come over that that's stuck fair. around. Sorry, James Storm. Uh, but the people that came over, Boy, if, what what they've done with Samoa Joe, who was being kidnapped by ninjas last I knew, to <laughs> one of the best feuds in a while with uh, with Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, Bru- like uh, that Nakamura is my favorite Samoa Joe feud since Kurt Angle. Okay, yeah, I can see that. I said it. I believe it. I saw that look. And now Joe and Kurt are on the same show. Yeah, oh. it isn't it? So. And if there is a shakeup, who knows where other people who might go? Who knows? And then, and then, look what they've done with Bobby Roode. Do you think we would be this excited oh about Bobby God. Roode? Yes. I mean, oh re- yes. Really? No. I I loved Bobby Roode. Okay. Loved Bobby Roode ever like since I saw him in TNA. I was looking at him like this guy is tailor-made for WWE. Why he's not there is beyond me. Mm-hmm. He's just living up to the potential I saw. And it's like the fact that he has an amazing theme song is icing on the cake. Mm-hmm. Bobby Roode could have done this with a, with his beer money theme song. Mm-hmm. He could have done it with it. the glorious theme helps tremendously. We, but so in, in, do we have any other call-ups come up on Monday other than the revival? No, um, no, it was just Finn. Finn no. came back, and that was basically it. I am partially hoping that Shinsuke gets pushed over to Raw only so that we can see him in person in July. <laughs> that's okay, the only so that's, reason. That's extremely that's selfish reason. reasons. Yes, yeah. purely selfish yeah. reasons. He knows. That. Other yeah, than that, he needs to stay on SmackDown. <laughs> 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 Although I'm very excited for him and Miz. Very excited oh, for him and Oh, Miz. I'm so disappointed. Oh, really? I really wanted him to think that was hey, John Cena you know and call him I... out. I really <laughs> wanted Shinsuke realized... to have a match with Miz John Cena. <laughs> I'm, the se- I'm the second person to dress as a John Cena character tonight. That's right. That That, that is absolutely right. Uh, uh, McCarlin says he, he never saw this coming with Rude. Uh, I agree. Not to this extent. I didn't consider him to be a possibility to become this successful in the long run, but that's because, that's because you haven't been watching TNA before that, right? Right, and we and we For recognize your sacrifice. Yes, <laughs> my TNA sacrifice. <laughs> uh, 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 TNA sacrifice. 
Yeah. So, I mean, in the end of the day, Bobby Roode knew that he'd be bound for glory. Oh, tons of plenty. Oh no! Oh and this no! This is the genesis of Eamon leaving the show again. No. Oh man, there is no I resolution mean, Bobby, of this Bobby conversation. Roode... <laughs> uh, he probably eats <laughs> intact snow peas. <laughs> yes, to make him glorious. A- Eamon? Bobby Roode. Fin- Bobby Roode finally getting said to NXT was a, a sign of hard justice. It was also his destination and XT. <laughs> okay, all right. On that note, I want to talk. He, 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 he was he, Bobby Roode was successful odds. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is, what's up, Missy? Well, I'm just I'm gonna give another comment from the chat room here. Uh, I'm Bobby actually to... is indicating he wants to see Cesaro go to SmackDown. I'm so we get that. Cesaro I'm versus Nakamura. That. Yes, and that exactly. And we'll talk more about the shakeup and everything in just a moment. Uh, but first, I want to give a shout out to our friends supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, and that is Slice on Broadway uh, supporting us and all the people that gather here in the studio. Uh, sometimes a lot of people that gather here in the studio. It's pretty amazing, uh, and we get to feel them actually ran into Rico tonight when we were uh, picking up our 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 pizza our pizza our pizza stash for the night um and uh really cool people down there down here broadway avenue in in uh beachview neighborhood of pittsburgh down in carnegie pa on main street of course pnc park look for them opening day if you're going down there home of the pittsburgh pirates they been supporting pittsburgh podcasting with the finest pepperoni pizza and uh support them too slice on broadway.com pgh underscore slice on the twitter all right let's talk about the post WrestleMania, or then let's let's talk a little bit more. You know, we talked about who who came up, um, and you know, we it, should talk about who came back. We 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 will we will we will. We will. Okay, first, okay, first okay. of all, first of all, I, I I like let's one of the big things is the Hardys showed up on WrestleMania. They're there on Raw. They're not quite broken that we can tell so far, but still they're back around. And it's been nine years since since they've been there. You know, between uh, uh, several three lettered federations, and uh, I don't know, like didn't the FBI arrest them at one point? Um, on yeah, probably a lot of drugs. Probably, probably a, lot, a of lot, drugs, of drugs. lot of drugs. A lot of drugs later, they've come back around, and here they are um, talking about at like the age thirty nine. Jeff Hardy's jumping off that top of that ladder. Yeah. Uh, geez. Oh, uh, Larry, Larry, did King Maxwell make his two hundred five live debut tonight? What's that? Did King did Maxwell? King Maxwell. Make his 205 um, I'm not tonight. sure. I missed the first half of it. I didn't see him on the second half. I, I'm, I'm, show I'm kidding. I'm kidding. King Maxwell is Matt Hardy's two-year-old son. Okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> that doesn't mean it didn't happen. Um, but anyway, that's, that's a fair point. That's a fair point. Anyways, uh, but 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 still, great to see them on there. It really capitalized on all the crazy stuff going on, and they are still scheduled for this Saturday in Meadville at IWC uh, at Night of the Superstars. Can we talk about the best tweet to come out of? That match from Bubba Ray Dudley. <laughs> from Bubba Ray? Okay, I was I thought I, I thought it was Revy Sky and with the, oh I didn't see with the surprise bitch gif. Oh, I didn't see that. <laughs> that was pretty amazing. Surprise, bitch! Bubba Ray's was the middle finger heard around the world. Yes, it was. <laughs> yes, it was. And to be followed up on Monday night by there's a shirt chad. Hashtag fuck, fuck that, that out hour. chant. Oh my god! Wow, yeah. that happened. Uh, the only way chant. that chant was going to get louder is if Roman Reigns was in the ring. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. But they were still they were still hyped up from that. Um, I kind of I kind of wish it was the Hardys versus New Day, so we transitioned from the Who chant into "Fuck That Out." <laughs> It, it's coming. <laughs> that feud. That feud. It's one coming. day. <laughs> one day. Ooh, dare to uh, dream. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, going back to uh, going slightly back to Mania with that. That was probably my favorite match on the whole show. It was. Mania. Oh, that was uh, great. Yeah, that's it was still the show. It was really good. Yeah. The the combo move of Cesaro doing the swing and Sheamus doing beats of the Bowery is probably mm-hmm. the best tag move I've ever seen, where the tag team partners are not interacting at all. Right, and they're your new number one contenders again. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, Which which I am very happy about. I love Cesaro Sheamus. They generally look like they enjoy tagging together. Mm -hmm. Cesaro has a really great knack. As much as we want to see him rise and be champ, WWE champion, obviously, and get this big singles push, Cesaro is great at making great tag teams. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
him and Tyson Kidd, you know, like him and he, Chris he's Hero. Very good at working with others. Him and Chris Hero, him and the BDK and Chikara, I, I talk about a lot. You know, it, it's yeah, absolutely. Him and may or maybe not another person shaped like an ice cream cone. I don't know what you're talking about. No, no, uh, no Cesaro, wait, Cesaro, Cesaro was one of the lowest ice creams back in the day. What? I'm pretty sure. You're not, Mike. What? Stop it with these unfounded accusations. <laughs> I learned this from my time in Upper Utica. Six weeks. <laughs> All right. Qualified. There we go. Um, but uh, no, great to see the Hardys back. Emma came back. Another big one. Yeah, Yay. that was a shocker. Yay. And she didn't said. walk away as soon as she entered. Nope. Nope. <laughs> she actually got into a match. Nope. And did nothing different. Just was the Emma that we loved from NXT. Yeah, you know what? It was a good reset. Which is fine. It was a good reset. I hope there's a WWE 24 on what the fuck happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, there, there was a tweet from Summer Rae last night when Emma got in the ring that um, Summer Rae said the last time Emma got into a ring, I had to help her get changed into her gear. So it's great to see her back at full health. Because apparently Emma, Emma was that was really that bad off. She was she was out of NXT with an injury. I knew that. So yeah. like, well, she she had come to Raw. Yeah, she had come to like her and Dana came, were on Raw together as a oh, tandem. And then she got hurt there. And yeah. short, really shortly thereafter, she got injured. Was it like like so? The Emma Lena stuff was just what they did in the meantime to keep her. Relevant. I believe so. Yeah. On TV, well, sort yeah, of. I'm I'm so, It's, it's like the Randy News happened. Network. Yeah, kind of right. Uh, what's that, Larry? I'm willing to forget all that Emelina stuff happened, and this is just a fresh start. Yeah. We're, we're well, right. if you want to remember the Emelina stuff, <laughs> nah. follow her on Instagram. Yeah, it's pretty much Emelina every day on her Instagram, yeah. like like kind of like the Lana stuff we were talking about, but without Bruce Everett and Harry Potter in the background. <laughs> so, <laughs> where's the fun in that? I know, right? <laughs> We eat the chickens. Um, I want I want a Rusev to do a one man show of all the Harry Potter play, all yes, the Harry Potter books. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, um. Other than that, uh, Matt Clarence points out Cesaro and Swagger. Seriously, oh yeah, the real oh, Americans. Yeah. Real Americans. Um, uh, Eamon, you might have to uh, unplug and replug that headset. Uh, that that happens sometimes with those. Um, so can, okay, get a little Cylon-y. Uh, the, 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 the sorrow. Oh God, Nasaro Nakamura. Oh Bobby. Mm. Oh Bobby, you just broke me. It's uh, a great idea. Boy, um, boy, would that be smashed? So, so okay. So we're we're having a superstar shakeup. We have not called it a draft. And by the way, they showed the graphic tonight of Shane McMahon was going to come in and address things, and they showed the entire rosters behind him. And and I think Chad, you were here, and I was saying, you know, I just want to not read the text and just make believe that he's going to announce the largest Royal Rumble ever. Yeah. Uh, because days the, the, the days of Royal Rumble. Yeah. Exactly. The next what did you say? The next two weeks. The next two weeks will just be Royal, Royal Rumbles. Rumbles. That's it. So, you know, three you know hour it Rumble will just. Start Stop. We'll see you next week with everybody still in the ring. Exactly. We'll go from there. You know what? You know what? The, you know what the shakedown should be? Hmm. A giant battle royal with the entire roster. The first person eliminated goes to Raw. Second person goes to SmackDown, and so on. That's a total reboot. Well, here's you'd need It'd be rings. amazing. Here's here's a question, and this is actually I'm I'm on their Twitter feed as we're we're coming through here. This question wasn't posed to us per se, but it's from somebody that we've had on the show before, Vaughn Johnson. And his question is, WWE makes it seem like champions can move in the shakeup. How can you move the SmackDown tag women's champs to Raw and vice versa? If they're going to do, like, how, how are they going to do that I mean, there's strategically? Still the, there's still the women. I mean, you can't just move one, right? You you can swap them. You can swap them. I think you can swap them and say you are now the SmackDown Women's Champion, but I, I that kills your lineage of your belts. Or I think. You or you them. can have them lose the title that night. Well, and that was his other his you follow up is them. unless everyone loses their titles next week, that would be at least four title changes. Yeah. So yeah. either way you're looking at it, you're you're. It's just if you get, I think if you get. If you get moved to a different show, you vacate your title. I think they're they're gonna have that's. I mean, there's a storyline yourself. Yeah, you go yeah. to the show, you're, you're just pissed. pissed. Yeah, because you were a, you were a champion. In I was on show. top of the world, and you took it away from me. You're not a number one contender. You're on a new show. You're with people you I, don't know. Yeah, I think they're just gonna pull names from a hat, though. <laughs> no, really. Well, <laughs> no, like, not an actual hat, so. but you know what I mean. No, I don't think so. They're they're building up the GMs way too much for it to be a randomizer thing. You think it's gonna be a trade? I, I think. 
I think it's going to be like a trading block night. I, I think, be, like, I think I, that would make I, sense. I, yeah, I'd be okay with that. I think I, it's, cause either that or you can do like a, like a 10 draft picks. Because you, you have between between Angle and Brian, I think you have like stuff that can make sense as far as that, right? Because they really played up. And SmackDown has really been good about this, you know, regress of who they didn't get, why they got people. Like there's reasoning behind them versus just picking, right? Yeah. Um, like the, there's a lot of weight to that. And that's something I think SmackDown has done really well and talking smack has done really well. Right. So yeah, I, I, I'm leaning. Yeah. I'm leaning towards that. Like in, right. like in theory, in theory, Brian's going to want to get rid of Miz as soon as possible. Yes. Yeah. Right. In theory, right. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's very possible. And I think the only, I could actually see them trading title belts, but the only ones you can do that with, would be the U.S. and Intercontinental. Well, you could do that with Universal and the WWE. Uh, yeah, but well, WWE's all right? red. No, one's one's red. Yeah. So oh, they can they can change it. They can change it. Yeah, yeah but right. that's a that's a you're not gonna do it to your fans. I that's feel like a mess. yeah, yeah. Well, well, then right. you unless start, unless then you, you start... swap unless you swap all of them, like you move Bailey to SmackDown, you move Naomi to Raw, you move the Usos to Raw, you move uh, Randy just... Orton to Raw. Well, I, well, those titles I, are, but the thing you can't because those titles are specific. They're Raw Tag Team Championships, and then, and then, and then you change the color schemes for the shows. I mean, you're, yeah, <laughs> you're we're good. Tear, you get to tear down and reboot the whole thing. You know what? The, the, what do the, you think? Do you think champions will be immune from this? I don't know. It's no. a possibility. It, it, it would but. be. It would be interesting if a champion got picked if they vacated. They had to vacate their title, and then they automatically became the number one contender for the other title. That'd be an interesting way to do it. Uh, yeah, especially since Brock Lesnar's Universal Champion. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we get. Oh, I see. The only get titles you're going to end up again. switching are U.S. and Intercontinental. Those yeah. are the only ones yeah. worth man, switching. But man, if Brock is the Universal Champion, that's a lot of room on your show for the people in the show, right? So that's like yeah. that's a lot of room for activities. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what? Well, 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 go ahead, Amen, Amen, and then producer Missy. I was going to say that also the talk when it happened of when Brock got the cruiserweight division of like Daniel Bryan wanting to get the cruiserweight division for SmackDown. So would they, you know, by taking the champion or by taking a good majority of the guys that are on the cruiserweight roster, would that in theory do that? I think they might be immune. Mm -hmm. They really shouldn't be, though. They shouldn't be. I agree. But I just want to point out that our chat room is actually really responsive to some of this. Billy Johnson's pointing out maybe that explains some of the non-title changes on Sunday mm-hmm. because they're going to be swapping things up. And Remedy says, hi, look at the shenanigans. So, hi, Remedy. Doc Remedy, <laughs> another OG mayhemer. You, may, mayhem after mania! Who's going to show oh, up? Oh, hold on, who, hold who, on. Who are hold. we going to call up from the NXT Sorg. podcast? Sorg. Oh, jeez. We have the digital weekly features. We do. We do. The digital weekly features are in the his house. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. The, the new people have no idea what we're talking about. No. It's okay. <laughs> it's just like okay. when the Hardy Boys it, showed up, and if you hadn't been paying attention, if you're a newcomer, you're why like, is everybody chanting the Who the hell are what, these guys? Broken opposite. I don't like. Broken I think, Doc uh, Remedy. Uh, broken Doc out? Remedy. Why do we hate the owl? I love the new I day. Think, uh, uh, Bobby <laughs> why is it? Uh, why is Matt article. Hardy's hair like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what happened to him? I heard so many people ask that. Like, what is up with Matt Hardy's head? Can't he just go full gray? We're like, it's a whole thing. Is he trying yeah. to be Involved Seth Rollins? Him, involved him getting struck by a light. Bobby and, shared a story where and premonitions and watched WrestleMania for the first time. Yeah, and they yeah. had they had no clue. Right. So they live blogged the whole thing. I, I saw that. And I read some of that. And wow, it is it was interesting to see because like I don't know who these guys are. They're just coming out. Well, one of the guys. Um, everybody. Apparently they're old and everybody loves them. They're like the Twitter feed that I have is going nuts, but I don't understand any of it. They're yelling delete. I don't get it. <laughs> it was uh, it was some some lady who was doing mm-hmm. it, and she had it was excellent to see that type of commentary mm-hmm. on. Well, even as it is, we had somebody at the party that hadn't watched in ten years, mm-hmm. and now like his commentary was kind of interesting, right? Yeah. So I mean, like, like throughout the night, so. Uh, yeah, it, it, it. I mean, this is this is the time that they tune in, right? Yeah. Most of the time, introduction, reintroduction. Maybe some people only watch WrestleMania every year. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, but like, yeah, oh, I mean, it's you true. know, it's like the Super Bowl. Yeah. I mean, how many of us watch the Super Bowl but never watch fo- football? Okay, I don't understand how you can watch only WrestleMania every year because I did that, and man, is it confusing. <laughs> <laughs> that's true that's true that's right and, Kyle, and i know i know a lot of the stories Car- and it's still confusing carlin's is saying wrestlemania seems like a terrible introduction for a new fan that is correct they should watch 205 live <laughs> <laughs> wait i don't know like shameless plug oh okay <laughs> for, it's not even your like, the, wait, it, it keeps it on there I, we need to get you on midweek war i uh, should talk about that uh, anyways um on that note there was is that everything? Oh, um, Hall of Fame. Sitting in the Hall of Fame. Well, yeah, <laughs> I don't want to get to the Hall of Fame yet. Can we, can we talk can, about okay. Enzo okay. and Kurt Angle? That is gold. Yes, yes. That's all. That's not how you spell soft. <laughs> that's all I got. Yeah. It was that's amazing. That's not how you spell soft. No, that's not that, how you that spell soft. was that was classic Kurt Angle. Yes, yeah. it yeah, was yeah. that like. No some rhythm, people said like, like he he's, seems a little bit rusty. No, that's no. classic Kurt Angle. No, if you go no, back and watch that's, any of yeah, his you're promos, right. you're right, and that's exactly what oh, I was saying. Oh that weird God. pause, that weird toss. Yeah, guys, that's perfect. Kurt can never wear his chicken suit around Enzo <gasps> unless they're doing a KFC commercial. Yes. <laughs> no. Oh, it's, sweet Georgia gold. Yeah. I, now, now, if he shows up in the chicken and Enzo starts <laughs> doing that, and then afterwards, Kurt's like. Man, he he really likes chicken. Now, that's a commercial. <laughs> Angle would have to be just oblivious to it, like. Uh, it's it's amazing. But he's all business now. He's I do, I do love the 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 fact that we will see a lot of Kurt Angle interacting with people that he's never in theory met before. Yeah, and I, I like. I like, like I can't wait for like confrontations with Kevin Owens, and you know. I like that they took Stephanie out of the picture too. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Know what I mean? Can we yes. talk about? I said this, and it seems uh, seems off color to say this, but it trust me, it fits. Um, I never thought of Stephanie McMahon as the old lady. It's a biking term. Oh yeah, yeah. We were we yeah. were saying at, at my uh, party, we're like all Triple H is missing on his vest is if you can read this, the bitch fell off. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I was wondering where Steph's lower back tattoo was. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It's just her old billion dollar princess logo. That's yep. exactly what it is. <laughs> it's, just, it's just amazing every year. Like, because we've obviously, the wrestling community, I think, in the last few years has looked more favorably of Triple H, which especially because of NXT and stuff like that. Um, but just every year at WrestleMania, it's just like it's the annual like man. Triple H really has a small penis and needs to feel better about himself. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, I'm, I'm sorry. I know he wanted to look badass. He's riding a fucking trike. It'll well, go. you That's can't ride a, You can't ride a motorcycle down that ramp. I don't think the Undertaker could no, ride a motorcycle down that ramp. No, you could. You could, but you could. he police had to get a police did. fucking escort. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So that, right. that was happening, right. and it was a very like you know. Of course, what, what we say, who 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 made that? And actually, that's yeah. not the only one. Was that a golf cart or or, or a bike that Sasha came out? I on? think they retrofitted the Royal Rumble cart. Golf cart. No, really, I think <laughs> they did. Okay, so because yeah, they, 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 had, they probably they exhibit that, in to pimp that ride. It had yeah, that yeah. same like arm bar thing in the back. <laughs> That the Royal Rumble cart had, and I'm waiting again. I'm waiting on the special video about Orange County Choppers that we were talking about before. Yeah. Like, definitely did that bike. Yeah, I, I as soon as as soon as that match was over, I took I found pictures on the internet and sent them to my dad, who's Which a Harley guy. You know, so makes you wonder why they didn't put a second seat on there for Stephanie. It was there. Why was she sitting on the backrest? <laughs> it's a statement. They didn't. They didn't. Yeah, they didn't make it. They didn't <laughs> put like a, a topper so she could just sit. Like the, like the seats there for her is yeah. if they were on the road. No, 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 no. The seat, it was she was on yeah, the like, seat back. Yeah, she was on yeah. the seat back. Yeah. But, I mean, the seats, there was a seat there. It Not for. Closer to him. But, yeah, like, yeah it's yeah. more like a road seat if you're. Right. Which, still, and why they, because, you know, those that back had to just come off. So, why didn't they give her a sword. stool? Yeah. You know, if she's going to be sitting on the back of it, but. Exactly. Maybe they Sword just can, overthought that. They didn't catch it. Or can we take Triple H's WrestleMania entrance and put in the song from Vacation? I don't know, but you know what? I... <laughs> Holiday Row. 
That could that could work. Well, I was thinking <laughs> they, could, they could be really good. I was thinking the entrance could use a couple of zebras myself, like uh, the Roman Reigns <laughs> promo. I don't know if you guys saw my video. I saw it. This is yeah, this is what uh, happens when I watch last week tonight after I watch Raw is a video like this. It <laughs> so, was great. Um, I, 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 I yeah. You uh, should do that whenever get whenever a ref gets bumped. <laughs> And I love. Did you also, notice also, there were wrestling moves for the zebras? <laughs> like I found, I found them doing the doing the Shawn Michaels and the chop. But I'm like, oh, we good. RKO, we good for a bit. Also, yeah, uh, side Amen. note yes. for uh, all those people on the internet out there, my new favorite thing is going to be uh, when people start photoshop shopping stuff into the ring during the Randy Orton Bray Wyatt match from WrestleMania. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yes. we talked about that. I saw the, yeah, we were talking about that. It's like, oh, I need to impose like scary clowns. Did and you stuff. see the Triple H headed one? No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I think somebody retweeted. There's got to be a template. It was, just, it was all Triple H's heads, <laughs> like old ones, like Hunter Hearst Helmsley heads. Like all just all in the ring. It was just asking for when it, wasn't was it? Like I, I thought Seth I thought Seth had a cooler entrance than Triple H. Oh much yeah. cooler. Yeah, fun. Yeah, fun. Since we're talking entrances, I was disappointed nobody had any real over the top entrances when you really think about it. Because past wrestling. There was much more of a reliance on very, there's much more of a reliance on fireworks. Fireworks, yeah. and yeah. fires, and, and video screen, and, and that's what I was talk. I was talking with uh, showing somebody that hadn't seen it, like how the ramp is all just this LED screen, yeah. right? And they yeah. do so much with that. So I, I think they invest in that. Plus, the set well, was the set insane. Was Five million dollars. The, ins- the set itself was how, insane. How yeah. did no one come in on a roller coaster cart? <laughs> yeah. How I did no one do that? It could have been right on the side. My God. Uh, but uh, but it, I was surprised. Oh, Nobody by the way, the WrestleMania the intro, the WrestleMania intro was straight up just beat for beat the Harry Potter ride at Universal. Hmm. Hmm. Straight up beat for beat. Like the, the part where they're the mentors, you see Randy Orton and a fucking snake. Like it was almost beat for beat. Like well, when you see the, when you see the cruiserweights, that's the Quidditch section. Like, <laughs> considering the ads, yeah, I, I I can get that now. Yeah, certainly. And they even use the Universal Globe for WrestleMania. Yeah, what well, we're saying, like, like somebody's going to get sued because they used the globe, and here they are with the with the ads. So I guess it kind of works out in in the long run. Well, I I think we're just pretty much going to continue this conversation after we get back and after the big question. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, check out our friends. Well, first of all, there's two ways you can check out. Uh, pro wrestling if you're so tired of this WWE talk uh, first of all our good friends at IndieWrestling.us you can check out some great stuff from our friends the International Wrestling Cartel who again will have the Hardys here uh, this uh, Saturday in Meadville it's Night of the Superstars 6 check them out at IWCWrestling.com uh, Matt Hardy also showed up several years ago at the uh, Renegade Wrestling Alliance that match is actually freely available at least uh, in, the, in the, most of it on RWA's YouTube page or if you want to get the full show uh, RWA Aggression Six, I believe that is uh, on indie wrestling at us on, on uh, digital download, or go way back to that other time where Matt Hardy was kind of signed and still kind of showed up on the indies when he was fired after that thing with Edge back in the day, and he has first ever match with somebody named AJ Styles that now has fantastic hair uh, at No Mercy, t- uh, No Mercy, or I'm sorry, No Excuses back in the day in about 2006 was it 2005 I believe that was um, all available over there at indie wrestling us or or you can also click that link of her fight.tv over on on our site at wrestling mayhem show download the app sign up and check out a lot of wrestling including your weekly uh your weekly um ring of honor with some friends of the show on there including chris chris larusso was on there recently in the top prospects tournament shane taylor that's been a friend of the show for a while we did an interview with him here in the studio right where chad's sitting uh just a couple of months ago do you feel the presence of uh notorious shane taylor there I do. Yeah. I do. Pretty boy killer. Look uh, out. Yeah, I can just feel it. Yes. Um, feel it. Uh, but go over there, check that out. You can even check out the, I, I hear, fantastic record-breaking RW, or 
geez, Ring of Honor ROH um, pay per view from this past weekend. The uh, uh, was a Superstar Extravaganza, I think was it, it was called, Super including in, including the night before Hardy showed up. They were in another ladder match with the Young Bucks. That year was amazing. So please go check that out. Uh, the Fight TV app link over on WrestlingMamShow.com and IndieWrestling.us. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, another message here and be right back with the big question. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Wrestling Mayhem Show. The whole crew here hanging out, talking post-WrestleMania. It's your WrestleMania hangover hangover uh with chad the shad larry on the couch producer missy mad mike up in poughkeepsie new york and uh, amen down somewhere in texas i where are you now dallas right <laughs> dallas yes <laughs> you've moved so many times i can't keep up uh yeah you know, in the in small state of texas he's in there don't worry you, you won't miss him uh and of course here in the mayhem studio wrestling mayhem show it's time for the big question and we were talking about it and uh so of course the shakeup's happening. Let's presume it's a trade. Let's you know presume that's where we're going to go with this. Um, and who who would you trade for who between Raw and SmackDown? Like what, what what would your number one trade pick to make things a little more interesting? Who wants it? Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! It's okay. It's okay. It's just the he oh. just he dropped the mic. Does that mean you have an answer? Mic drop. This <laughs> made a mic drop. You're supposed to do that after you say. Um, it. Usually, I usually you do the mic drop after you say what you're. Gonna I got yes. excited. Yes. I got I got excited. Sort of. Okay. Okay. Well, do you I'm have a Hall of Famer. I don't need any of this. <laughs> do you have a pick? <laughs> you have me. A pick? I, I was in the audience for for Takeover. <laughs> I was at the Hall of Fame. You were we'll actually snap or uh, taking selfies with somebody I know. You will talk See? about the Hall of Fame in a moment. There you go. Um. Boy, that's a tough. That's a tough one. Just one, just one trade. Just one trade. What would be? Because we we have a lot of people here. One trade. Well, um, let's say um, new day for American Alpha. Oh, okay. 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 I'm gonna. I think that'd be good for the tag division. I think, yeah, that'd be great. They'd be between the matchups and everything. It's a lot of. I, I like American Alpha being on Raw mm-hmm. to compete with those guys. I mean, it, the only problem, well, I mean, Revival's there, and you might see a little bit of rehash there, but that's okay. And you'd also have American Alpha on the same show as Kurt Angle. Yes, that makes absolute sense. And then you have the New Day, just you know, getting on the Miz because mm-hmm. you know they would. Uh, Cena's over there. Unless you guys swap them. I was going to say <laughs> um, the Hardys for like the Fashion Police or Vaudevillains just because there's too many. And we'll take titles off the table for this. You, you, you were just taking yeah, talent no, ta- for talent. No, no, yeah, just talent for talent. Yeah. Like, just because there, there's there's so many heels over in SmackDown mm-hmm. in the tag team division. And I can't really think of what. I'm sorry, the chat room. We'll get to the chat room. Wait, I'm okay. sorry. We'll there, get to there, the chat room. There, there's just not that many. There's just not that many babyface tag teams on SmackDown. You know that that division's kind of flat over on on SmackDown. Yeah. I mean, obviously they didn't. They weren't even populated. On right. Populated, but but yeah, flat. I mean, yeah, they got crime time light over there. there there's a yes. There is a problem if American Alpha couldn't make <laughs> an interesting match at WrestleMania enough to be put on the card. No, none of them. Yeah, they put the entire ta- SmackDown tag team division in the Battle Royal. Yeah, absolutely. And like, it just it's weird. But yes. yeah. Oh, mean, next. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> Eamon, how about you? It's a good pick. Uh, the one that came to my mind, uh, I would trade uh, Sami Zayn to SmackDown, and to Raw, I would take Luke Harper. Nice. I, I like that. Okay. All right. I like it. it, get, it I think gets Luke, Luke especially right. recently on SmackDown, has been showing that he can do some really great single stuff. And I, I think on on Raw, he has a few more options he could go with. And then obviously, with the SmackDown, to me has much better storytelling in certain realms, and I think that fits perfectly for Sami Zayn. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. okay. Uh, how about you, Mike? Um, well, I'm gonna say a different one than what I said uh, last night when we first thought about this. I'm going to say Becky Lynch for Dana Brooke. Get okay. all four get all four horsewomen on Raw. Get 
get Dana over onto SmackDown, where I think she can thrive. Yeah. As opposed to being fodder. It, that is the yeah, is the problem. She's been beat up by like basically everybody on Raw at this point. What would you be sending her over as? What do you mean? Is she a heel or Oh yeah. She's a heel? Okay, because I mean, she's not a heel right a, now. She can be a heel or she she can be a heel or she can be a face. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I think it would depend on her interactions with people there because she's never really interacted with any of those women on SmackDown except for Alexa Bliss briefly on NXT. So I, I think Dana could just carve her own path there because Dana's actually pretty good. She's just been either she was the second to Emma or the second to Charlotte, and now she just gets yeah. beat up every week. And Becky Lynch on Raw makes Raw's division stronger. Mm-hmm. Actually, actually, if I can I can I add a second one? Obviously, I don't want to jump over. Go for it. Uh, if we're talking about women, uh, I would trade Mickey James for Charlotte. Hmm. Mm. Hmm. That would light up that women's division there. I really like the idea of Dana. I, Mickey, Bojo. Mickey and Sasha, Mickey and Bailey. I think like that's female. Yeah. yeah, there's so much you can work with there. Yeah. Got some oh, I didn't get oh. make my pick yet. Sorry. Thank you very much. Sorg, Sorg, what's your pick? For sure, I'm taking Finn Balor over to SmackDown, oh. so he can have a fantastic match with AJ Styles. Uh. And amongst others, so uh, and I would uh, from SmackDown. I'm having a tough with from SmackDown. Uh, I think I I I'd kick a lady over there. Um, that sounds bad by itself. Um, <laughs> I throw Alexa on Raw. Alexa Bliss. Oh, Alexa will get think, killed on Raw. Would she? Yes. Nia Jax would. Well, wait, 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 because we already have Tiny Sasha Banks. I know not as tiny as yeah. Alexa. But have you seen Alexa Bliss in person? She is a pixie. I have seen her in person and wondered if I could fit her in my pocket. I know I know how tiny she is. Um, I, I don't think me, that helps. Trust Alexa me, Bliss. you would think so too. Again, the looks from Larry. Um, That's she, why I like Dana Brooke going over. She can seem large and imposing. Mm-hmm. Right. Dana, Dana Brooke would seem like a beast. Plus, I think Dana Brooke and Mickey James would have a killer match. Mm hmm. Could be. I think they would have a really good match. Sword. But I think I think Alexa would thrive on on Raw. To still be taking Alexa. I'm still thinking Alexa. I'm taking her. I, I think she's talented enough to make it work, but like Sasha does. Well, that kind of kills the SmackDown women's division as far as heels. Unless Oscar comes up. No, she, as a heel. You mean that Liv well, Morgan on yeah. SmackDown? Oscar Oscar kind of took a heel. Turn she did kind of a little bit. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. She oh, was yeah. flirting with it, and then oh, the yeah. throw the ref. That's that's a yeah, that's yeah, there a we heel. go there we go it's it a would, heel turn she had me Tina at the Tina in the chat room says Alexa is only an inch taller than her son <laughs> that's great <laughs> also from the chat room we've, we've oh, got some we go. we've we've got some switches here that that people would be making Billy Johnson would switch uh, Gallows and Anderson for American Alpha mm-hmm. could be interesting Matt Carlin's actually proves of that one. Now, you, you reunite the club on that yeah yep, yep. Aaron Aaron tossed in a, a fun thing James Ellsworth for a real turtle. But then he came back and said that uh, his his real switch would be trade AJ for Roman. Yeah. And uh, I say fuck you, Wheels. Matt <laughs> Matt chimed in with a trade Sammy for Dean. I think that was one of my trades last night. Sammy for Dean. And Brandon says uh, Ambrose for, for Cesaro to reunite the Shield. Yeah, I'd be okay with that. Yeah, yeah. So let us know what you guys think too. Uh, what, who would be a, a trade you would make? If, presuming that's what we're doing next week. Uh, on the superstar shakeup, uh, so. I, I would also trade pelvis Wesley Johnson for Chet Charterson. <laughs> Surf dudes oh. with attitudes. All right, <laughs> there was so much stuff over the weekend. Of course, there was the Hall of Fame induction ceremony, um, which maybe after all the wrestling the last four days. Holy crap, you may have forgotten about that. And, of course, they did switch it. It was Friday night, so it was kind of a uh, not slower start, I guess, but but still, like, like it was kind of not sandwiched in there between NXT and, and, and the other stuff, But uh, I, which I think says a lot, considering. But uh, what what do you guys think? I, I you know we we talked about this uh, in person, I think at the party or something like that. But mm-hmm. it, it was it was a pretty fun Hall of Fame. It was a long Hall of Fame. We saw the return of Tony Chimmel. Saw the return of Tony Chimble. Like there were some, like there's as many like like pop ups and surprises at the Hall of Fame as like Monday Night Raw after after Mania at this point. Oh my God! 
Teddy Long coming out as the Raw GM was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. And Vince just looking at him like, no, so, no, Teddy, no, Teddy, what are you doing here? Teddy, it's not you. Listen, it's, every, damn it, it's not you, Teddy. Everybody, <laughs> everybody hits this like post-retirement like kind of character. Like Teddy's the guy that comes out and he pulled and, it our truth. Yeah, he's been doing that. Yeah. He's, he's come out and made like tag team matches, and they're not like you're not the GM, go away. Yeah. Like yeah. like the several times now, right? I love it. Like on Raw, I you love know, it. And he Ron just Simmons. apologizes. Ron like, Simmons. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's Ron Ron Simmons. You know, became the damn He's, guy. Damn. You know, I mean, this it, it's it's kind of interesting, like the how like because if you hadn't paid attention and you just like saw Teddy Long Friday night in his speech and were like, yeah, SmackDown GM, SmackDown GM guy, and he came out and you saw how bad they treated him, you're like, oh, you know. But he still danced off, so so at least he got that <laughs> right. Uh, so. Anyways, I was I was I was you know I was partially hoping when they were announcing the GM and we had the fake outs and the fake outs, I was hoping they would do a swerve and end up being DDP. <laughs> like like not, I was hoping it was gonna be Rick Rude's son. Yeah, that'd be oh amazing. my god! If he's not on NXT by uh, by June, I'm gonna be mad. <laughs> <laughs> yes um but anyways anyways yeah and they did re-air the ceremony of course i, I was was the ceremony only like an hour on just, usa just part of it yeah, i think they yeah. showed um ddp beth and angle they I, killed the long-winded yeah. old people they, 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 exactly. they, they, <laughs> well, they, they've done that before they used it used to be it used to be that you we could not see it before the old old oh sorry. what yeah sorry I, I told Larry to watch his choice of words because he says that they killed the long-winded old people. Ooh, yeah, yeah, no. Sorry. No. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but, but it used yeah, to we be... have to be careful when we say that, when we say stuff like that about Hall of Famers because that actually happened once. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh. Mm. Anyways, mm. Um, uh, what, I forgot what my point was. Oh, no, yeah. The sh- remember, the remember before, before Network, like, we would, all we got of the Hall of Fame that we could watch was that hour the hour long abbreviated one and you see it was like four hours yeah it was four hours um so yeah especially like it was it was really stuck out when rick flair did his speech and we're like really this is it it's mostly packages at that point uh so it's really cool we do see it sometimes kind of like uh what's going on here with that we see the role the whole unfiltered like everybody going too long uh uh kind of situation but uh and that seems to happen every year or two but uh no, I, I I thought it was really good, and it was um it was a lot of fun to see um a lot of the stories. I love that, but I, I I could listen to a lot of these guys tell the old stories, right? Like that's why we listen to whenever they pop up on Jr's podcast or Art of Wrestling or something like that. Um, or we sat here and listened for forty five minutes, Jerry Sags talking about uh, breaking into the uh, Elvis. Uh, Graceland and peeing on his grave with the with the rockers, um, you know, <laughs> like stuff like that, you know. And, and I think I think it's great to see it um, on that and see them having fun and see what embarrassing stories the APA will come up with this year. I actually didn't like the Kurt Angle speech. <laughs> the, Surprisingly, what? No, I really didn't because that. And here's here's why. Like it was funny and all, but that's like the one show a year where they're supposed to be like sincere and you like to hear those stories and everything and he just reiterated the Corey graves interview word for word almost you know what i mean like yeah it, but it felt he's like also gonna be around a while yeah and that's fine but i mean like that's the one night where he shouldn't be doing that particularly <laughs> I, I i agree with that because particularly with how long Angle's been gone and the, yeah. the you know, circumstances of why he left. Like, mm-hmm. the fact that, you know, I, I, I'm not I saying know. he needs to, like, rehash, like, old wounds or anything. I'm just saying, you know, a little, like, you know, Sincerity mention. Sincerity or like, something. You know. Yeah. He did kind of address that stuff, though. He was like, I was I was in a bad way. And he, like, gave some advice for the younger but, guys. And I thought that was really cool. But that was all stuff that he did for the Corey Graves interview. He literally. Okay, but he also but, did it live in front of everyone. I like, because a lot of people aren't even going to know that Corey Graves. It felt exists. scripted. Well, it well yes. Well, they, it, they, wrote, they wrote a speech. No, so. I mean, they, no, they, I mean, it felt like it felt like WWE creative wrote that. For hey, him. no, no, no. The Bushwhacker yeah. speech years ago was not scripted. I will not. <laughs> that was not tell scripted. Me that that was scripted. <laughs> I don't think you can script the Bushwhacker. I don't think the general. Rockers were scripted either. No. Well, no, you can. Whoa, yay. Whoa, three A's. Yay, five A's. 
lick each other. Can I do? Can I do a? <laughs> can I do a secondary big question here? Sure. What was your favorite WTF or holy crap moment from a Hall of Fame? Like, for instance, that time that Kevin Nash said that you can thank him and his buddies for how much everybody gets paid these days. Right? Like, I mean, that was like, true. okay. Are you yeah. talking about ever? Like, 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 yeah, yeah. Like, like what really sticks out? Like, yeah, that was like a holy crap, like, Hall of Fame moment for you. Uh, mine was actually from uh, this year. This year? What, yeah, what do you think, Mike? So was mine. This year, um, I hope I'm not stealing Chad's. You might be. When when Beth Phoenix No, you're not. Okay. <laughs> that Just was make it clear. Um, when Beth Phoenix was talking about how Molly Holly under the table paid for her wrestling school. Yeah. That that story was amazing. Like legitimately amazing. It just it floor because like a lot of other stuff I've heard about or seen before i'd never heard that story before Mm -hmm. that's absolutely amazing and molly holly should go in the hall of fame next year chad what's yours so the biggest wtf it was jim Cornette introducing the (laughs) was it that he did not go off script no it was the (laughs) fact that he said that with that tag team is the most sex he has ever seen (laughs) <laughs> and that most of it was very brutal well, I mean, have you between Ricky men Robert? and women and I was like what the fuck what did he, he just implying? say he needs to have like, wait a minute yeah. he just said literally the most sex he has ever seen in person was with this with these two guys Yeah, and that most of it was brutal what the hell does he mean <laughs> He needs to have a segment on the Edging hey, Christian, Edge Christian show where it he was, just babbles random shit. Yeah, I, it's the '80s, man. <laughs> I know, but that was really like that was my. I mean, out of all the Hall of Fames, that was that was pretty ha, out there. Have you, you ever seen? You he seen seen very seen sincere the about the whole thing. The have show. Have you ever seen the footage that goes around? I watched the entire tape with Jess Flexor one time. Uh, well, the behind the scenes Great American Bash tour. Where like yeah. everybody's backstage and is like hopped up on coke. By the way, Michael Gary or Gary Michael Capetta uh, that was on the show recently, he used some of that footage in his one man show, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like the Road Warriors and and Dusty and, and everybody else is just like coked out of their minds and like doing God knows what back there. And then there's just Paul Ellerwing reading like an Alaska magazine because he's taking a trip there, and it's like he's reading, <laughs> you know, like, he's reading all the fucking time. You know, it's look for this, just look for the. Great American Mash tour, like behind the scenes, it's it's interesting, Jesus. right? Um, you, you actually see like road, I, like the, I, the road warriors doing coke on the video, <laughs> like it's insane. Sorry, oh, go ahead, Amen. Amen. I was just, I was just gonna say, say WTF oh. moment from that related to um uh the uh what Chad just said for the Hall of Fame. Okay, because it was it wasn't something that settled in me until like days later after the Hall of Fame when I realized, oh my god. Jim Cornette and Kevin Owens were in the same building for the Hall of Fame. That must have been awkward as hell. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, back. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Background, Eamon? Shit. Background on that? Well, well, background, Jim Cornette does not like Kevin Owens and vice versa. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the days when Jim Cornette was booking Ring of Honor. Um, yeah, it... I just thought I, I would love to have been a fly on the wall if they like crossed eyes at least during the, during the <laughs> night. Right, right, right. Yeah, there's a lot of things. Uh, just let's just look up uh, those two names and and rant. I'm sure you'll find something. Interesting I wouldn't for be that. surprised if Kevin Owens was just giving him the finger through his entire speech. <laughs> that would be the second <laughs> time Kevin Owens got a fingertip over. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, who else has one here? <laughs> um, yeah, one. You're looking if you're for, still if you're still thinking, I have a secondary one. Are, are, were you looking at just this year? Because no, no, like no, not just this year. Well, okay. for, wait, wait. Well, first of all, uh, wheels, Mister T. Oh, hey, we all love our mamas. We all love our mamas. <laughs> and that WWE took his speech and made a Valen- or a Mother's Day video that year. Like they yeah. remixed it and made a Mother's Day video of it, <laughs> which was pretty incredible. <laughs> um, two votes in the chat room. For two, two votes for oh ABK sleeping. sleeping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, so, when was he sleeping? <laughs> right during DDP's speech, I believe. 
<laughs> they cut uh, to him. no, no. They cut to him, and he's got the cowboy hat. And he's sitting beside Nash, and he's just like heads down. Yeah, the sleep break kid. Heads down, sleep break kid. I, I can't believe you missed that one. <laughs> well, I mean, Sean does have a lazy eye. Sometimes he just needs to rest. You couldn't see his eyes. He was, <laughs> yeah. he was, he was had one of those old Texas naps where he kicks up on the farm <laughs> equipment, <laughs> lowers a cowboy hat on the eyes, and that's it. You're like, you don't and, know what I'm doing. I'm my praying, and that was a big question: praying or sleeping. Yeah, the marble man like naps. Right. <laughs> <laughs> there you did. go. There you uh, go. An- another WCF moment that had to do with the Hall of Fame has to do with Sean. Okay. Was was when Brett was inducted? <laughs> no, no, and it didn't have anything to do with the ceremony. That WrestleMania, Brett didn't come out on the stage. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. That I totally forgot about that when I was rewatching this stuff. And Howard Finkel just announced that, um, due to him not feeling comfortable or something like that, Bret Hart will not be appearing. Like he just said that to the entire WrestleMania <laughs> crowd. Yeah, yeah, a little it was bit. Super awkward. It, that it, that fucking come on, get over yourself, Brett. Um, Especially it was the mania with Sean versus Vince. Hmm. That mm-hmm. could have been a total catharsis for Brett. Mm-hmm. Like he could have punched Vince McMahon in the dick and let Shawn Michaels win. Yep, absolutely. I I think my uh, favorite Hall of Fame moment was Mick Foley dropping the elbow on Jericho on the stage. That was amazing. I, I was during I was there Foley's for that Hall one. of Fame. Yeah, that I think that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, fuck, yeah, fuck, fuck that. Brett. Yeah, they they actually they actually talk about that on uh, Jericho's podcast with Foley. Oh yeah, and they definitely said it wasn't planned. No, it clearly it wasn't. wasn't. Yeah, yeah, that was like, totally it definitely was not planned. Mm-hmm. And then Punk going down there and as the ref and counting him. <laughs> oh, Punk! I don't, even, I don't remember that. Oh yeah. Like oh that no, that right. was at, that was in Madison was Square great. Garden. I remember that vividly. That was, that was Foley's one regret. He never beat Chris Jericho. <laughs> yeah, and then so Jericho, Jericho just, went and laid down on the stage. He like hopped on stage, just laid down for him to get pinned. And Foley's like, "No, no, I can't." And then he just runs, drops that elbow. Well, because like he wasn't going to do it, and then um, Punk got up for the referee. He, he's doing all the ref poses, like, like point, like he's like, "All right, well, I guess I fucking have to do it now." And Jericho was saying, "Yeah, I didn't think it through because I'm lying on a stage." There's no give to that. I was sore <laughs> two weeks later. That's amazing. And then, you know, not counting the match he had the next day, probably. Uh, with yeah. Square, yeah, he had the match with Fandango, actually. So, yep. Um, all right, guys. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you guys for, for getting together and, and, and recapping the Amazing Mania weekend. Uh, but what in all that happened this weekend, in this week of wrestling, in this. This little like five day stand in Orlando that WWE just did, which is fantastic to begin with, right? What did you learn from WrestleMania weekend? Who wants to go first? Uh, I can go. Okay. I learned uh, wrestling with only using two moves each can probably get you one of the highest paychecks many a weekend, and that's something. (laughs) (laughs) Qualify. Hey, you know what? You know what? With the way that match turned out, I would rather have had that close the show. I'm being dead serious about that. I would rather have Brock Lesnar and Goldberg. The crowd ate it up, but oh my God, you guys just wrestled for less than five minutes and only did two moves to each other. And you're probably getting paid more than anybody else on the show. <laughs> yes, that's true. Uh, Mad Mike, what'd you learn? Oh, I oh man, there, there's a lot of wrestling this weekend, Sork. But I learned that Austin Aries hoisted himself on his own petard because he lost to a thumb in the eye. <laughs> that is true. That is true. And I didn't realize that until just now. And I'm like, that's what I fucking learned. Because Neville has listened to every Austin Aries commented match. And he's like, oh, Neville sticks his thumb in people's eyes. Guess what? That's how you're losing, bitch. What I'm a, the king of the cruiserweights. What a good idea. Missy? I learned that even if I had not watched wrestling in 10 years, if I had watched this WrestleMania, I still would have had some relevancy. 
like to what I watched 10 years ago. Yeah. 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 It's true. Brock and Goldberg, Hardy Boys, Triple yep. H, Undertaker. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would have looked at some of these other people going, I'm not sure who they are. But for the most part, yeah, I, I was I was perfectly content. To the couch, Larry. Um, I learned that I uh, am... Uh, give me a minute. Chad the Chad. I, I learned that um, I have a a real good love for tag team wrestling because that triple threat tag team match on takeover was just amazing. Mm -hmm. And, um, I also learned how much I really love a Brock Lesnar part-time champion. Just, it, it gives that, uh, for me, it gives that title prestige. Mm -hmm. Whereas he's just like, if you're worthy, I'll show up. Yeah. I'm around, but I'm not, I'm not talking the spotlight. You guys got to figure it out. I'll come I'll come around. It, it, I don't know. He seems to elevate a little more. And I think that's also because of Paul Heyman. But yeah, I really like that. And I really don't like Goldberg. <laughs> All right. Larry? Uh, I learned that. I, you okay? Yeah. Don't worry. Just, just okay. do your thing. You'll, um, see. You'll see. I learned that I'm really looking forward to babyface AJ Styles. Yeah. Yeah. He, fl- mm-hmm. he f- flipped like instantly tonight. And it was I, awesome. I really hope he didn't just sign his trade clause, though. <laughs> yeah, that was a hard yeah. foreshadow about yeah. him Maybe. being like, "I love this place." Like, what you you're leaving this place? So yeah, 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 yeah. See you later. <laughs> you put me through a window. Fuck you. He'll turn um, chain. Yeah, get the yeah. fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I respect you on Raw. I learned. I learned. I sometimes, sometimes the better match happens in the crowd. So I can't remember which of you guys shared this one, but uh, there was a match that happened in like one of the first few rows. <laughs> like, and I yes. saw this when I was there in twenty nine. Like people dressed as like Ric Flair and Bret Hart, like wrestling in the parking lot. It happened in the stands. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, that's that's been known to happen. Yeah. So that that was pretty pretty fantastic and uh, oh so sorry i also learned a beach ball can go fuck itself <laughs> beach balls versus the cruiserweights what's going to win in the end it ended up being the cruiserweights so uh, how about jackson argos stealing the show at jackson argos friend of the show jackson argos <laughs> hi jackson behind the the new the new uh uh, uh soon to be married oh, couple speaking of signs i also learned that roman reigns is a holocaust denier <laughs> <laughs> I was completely unaware. <laughs> Thank you, random sign guy during the Undertaker Roman Reigns match. How did that match. sign not get taken away? I don't. He was I crafty. Was, he was. He was. was moving, and it was a well written sign. The, I could read the it. Jackson once ended up moving in too. Like like not along I, the. Uh, I don't think. Creative. I don't think that Roman Reigns sign actually exists. I think if you go and rewatch it, it's not there anymore. Mm. I hope so. <laughs> like I, I wonder how take it. Oh, I saw it. It's fake news. Just fake like news, I saw yes. Mickey James grab Trish Stratus. They can't edit that away either. No, nope. no, nope, not out of your mind. <laughs> nope. Nope, the my the grab memory. and the lick. That I saw it. No, no, they still show the grab, but they don't show they the s- lick. No, they don't show the lick. That's what they cut away. Yeah. Jeez. Tina Keys. How I learned how wrestling can come full circle sometimes. Wheels says oh, wait, hashtag. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait, wait. Tina has a follow up to that. I, I'm, thing. I'm getting to it. Ooh, I'm getting to it. Go, 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 okay, go ahead. You the have a process. Between the swords. We, we is, do have a process. This is so, why we're beyond arm's length away from each other. Tina's yeah, Tina's well. full circle. She realized that a Power Rangers movie came out. Goldberg and Hardys were champs. She wants to know what year this is. It's the future, Marty. The shells out. <laughs> yeah, Rangers. seriously. Uh, Aaron learned that hashtag thank you Taker. That's what he learned. Just hashtag thank you Taker. Do we think Taker is done? Yeah, yeah. I think so. God, I hope so. Yeah. I think one more match. <laughs> oh, one geez. more match. No. Next Dude, year, Cena. Only if it's a I... casket match or a buried alive match, and he just doesn't come back. Actually, buried who's alive he going to do a bar- If he's going to do that, he needs to do that with Bray. That's the only person he can no, do that with. No, Cena. Cena. A Cena. buried yeah. alive match with Cena. Yeah. I th- I think it's title versus career. I d- Cena's a 17-time champ going into WrestleMania. He challenges the Undertaker. I don't see it. All right. Yeah. Brandon learned. I like it, but I don't. I don't see him doing that. Brandon learned that Shane McMahon learned a, f- a new move from Neville. Oof. Yes. Holy crap. I'm saving this one for last because it's my favorite. Um, I learned that Taker will be missed, even though he wrestled once a year for the last few years. 
and that was from Billy Johnson. Um, Matt Carlin's learned that if Roman ever teams with the Authors of Pain, I think that's supposed to be the heels will be unreal. Or the booze, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I don't know because it's, it's. I love that would be amazing. I love the Authors of Pain. By the way, I don't if, care what if Roman says. if Roman was like this is my new shield. Yeah. Oh, and, that'd be great. And and this comment is what had me laughing and just like dying over here. Uh, Bobby would learned that Charlotte Flair owes Dalton Castle some royalties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was peacocking a little bit. <laughs> she I don't was know totally... about the party side, but... To be fair, they both owe NBC some royalties. Tina um, actually put, put an addendum in there. Uh, her full circle comment was a bit personal. She was nine when she first saw when she first saw Undertaker's first match. Her son is around the same age for his last match. Oh, damn! Time is a flat wow. circle. I I feel like we should play like that sad Sarah McLaughlin song as we play the. No, I don't want to see the dogs dying. Undertaker. Yeah. Undertaker uh, dying. We used to sing. Didn't we used to sing it for like TNA wrestlers? A, yes, we used to sing it for. It's just a slow mo of Undertaker trying to sit up, and then he doesn't. He just lays to the side. That was like, oh, that was a gift oh, for Monday. Yeah. Like uh, Monday morning, gonna sit. Oh, oh. no! Oh no! Oh no! Can we go back to that shooting star press? Yes. From Shane McMahon. What form? Yes. That was fucking awesome. <laughs> he did a better one than Brock Lesnar did at 24. Yes, he did. He did yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah. yeah. Well, he kept it close to the ropes. Yeah. Lesnar tried to go, <laughs> he, to go the distance. He tried to go to the middle of the ring. <laughs> Matt. It's like, I'm going to get that fourth monkey bar. <laughs> yeah. Matt, you are my spirit animal. Yeah. Celine nope, Dion that's, that's... plus Undertaker farewell. Uh, yep, looks, sorry, that's the new video. Looks like that's my new video project. Um, I will remember oh. you. And then throw in the gongs. <laughs> no, why don't you just throw in Titanic? So Monday Play morning. Titanic. Oh, hold on, hold on. There's one last story and we're going to get out of here. Because <laughs> Monday morning, Monday morning, I walked out of my house. And I heard bells. Bells, bells? And my, one, of the churches, one of the churches, the bells were ringing. And I was like, oh, everybody's remembering Undertaker today. <laughs> it's a day of mourning. <laughs> that was like my first initial thought. I'm like, wait, wait. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, the anyways. Church, like, let's sign a few off for the old Undertaker. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, yep, 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 yep. The priest is a big fan up the hill. Um, <laughs> Tina said, uh, wants to correct, Brock's shooting star press was WrestleMania 19. No, I know. He was 24 years old. Oh, Oh, okay. okay. He was 24 years old at WrestleMania 19. Okay. Thank at least I'm pretty sure on that. For the clarification. He, he, let's, just, let's just say he was way younger than Shane is currently. You still receive this money. So. Yes. All right, guys. It's been so much fun. First of all, Eamon, thank you so much for coming back. I hope we didn't scare you away again. Please, please don't stay away so long. I, no, no. Oh, oh, no. No, not at all. Not after some of this conversation tonight. <laughs> Does that mean you're going to come back to correct us? Does that mean you're going to come back to correct us? Sure, let's go with that. Okay. He's going to have (laughs) editor's notes. So instead of him just yelling at us on Twitter. Yeah. Do I do that often? I don't know. Kind of. Maybe sort of. Sure. Um, Where can people check out things that you do out there? Oh, things that I do. Well, you can uh, follow me on Twitter at Amen 2 please. Uh, be sure to also check out uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling uh, at inspireprowrestling.com. You can also actually check out our latest event on fight.tv on demand. Uh, Click that link uh, at wrestlingmanshow.com. Yeah. Uh, go download the app, and uh, it, that'll be out on April 23rd. Uh, so be sure to check that out. There you go. And Mad Mike is uh, Mad Mike 4883 on the Twitter. It, it has been a lovely show, Sorgatron. I thank you for having me. I will see you all at Lethal Leap Year. And um, sometime tonight, I believe, the brackets for Mania Madness yes. will be up. We determine yes. the best WrestleMania. You all get to vote once I figure out how the voting is going to work. Yeah, please, anybody that's helped with that in the past, please give Mike some help. Uh, so on on the WordPress, um, Larry. See ya.
<laughs> See you next week. Chat the chat at chat the chat on the Twitter. Yes, that's where you can find me. The Missy Missy Wool is always here helping me out. Uh, at Rebell- Rebellious Flaw on the Twitter if you want to hit her up. I'm at Sorgatron, SorgatronMedia.com. We got a lot of stuff going on, including a new podcast on the network, Bold Nights Out. If you're in the Pittsburgh area and want to know what to do for the weekend, our good friends from BoldPGH.com, uh, Bold Pittsburgh, uh, helping out with that. Glad to have them on the network. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, chat room. You can see us here 10 p.m. Eastern time every Tuesday on live.wrestlingmamshow.com or currently the Facebook live stream and look out for other events and everything. This Indie Mayhem show this week is Conquer Pro Wrestling, a theater experience with pro wrestling. We talked to uh, John Static from that promotion. Look for that Thursday in the feed, also on all your podcast and video um, outlets for Wrestling Mayhem Show or Indie Mayhem Show. Just search for it. You'll find some great interviews on there, including last week's guest, Jinx, is out as of last Thursday. If you like that, and this is before Larry hated her, check out the interview. Uh, so until then, we'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. Wait, just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.